Little more than an hour or so ago, producer John Walters and I were staring out of the window of our revolting little office, wondering what to play for you this week on the BBC World Service. Happily, Susie and the Banshees came galloping over the ridge in the nick of time, and there are tracks from their Kaleidoscope LP, and these form the back of the... Ba Sorry, what a time to get it wrong. I couldn't read my writing. Oh, swallow it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Sit down, old chap. Yes, can't read his writing. Glasses steaming up. Needs a holiday. This is my chance to be a real disc jockey. Heidi, hi! Yes, it's your favourite and mine. Me with much more music through to the witching hour. That's 12 o'clock. Clock on the old clock on the wall. Yeah, Dave, my engineer, is laughing at me through the glass. OK, go and get some coffee, mate, from the BBC canteen. Yuck. OK, yes, it's fun time. Yes, did you know what's happening? Today's Harry Wood the Wake's birthday. Ooh, Betty, Heidi, hi. Happy birthday, Harry Wood. OK, yes, fun time. OK, mate, if you were Harry Wood the Wake, what did you say to your baby? Hello, baby. Yeah, this is the Big Bopper speaking. <laughs> oh, you sweet like a big-eyed girl and make me act so funny. Make me spend my money. Make me feel real loose like a long-necked goose and like a girl. Oh, baby, that's what I like. Heidi, hi! Oh, dear. Actually, I only did that to persuade him it was a real disc jockey. Actually, it's not a real disc jockey. It's John Walters. I've been producing Peel for many, many years, and I've got a show of my own on Saturday, uh, Walters Weekly. What's happened is that Peel's gone over to the continent. He's uh, comparing, as he does every year, the Pink Pop Festival in Holland. And uh, the record you just heard was Chantilly Lace, of course, by Big Bopper, a sort of mm, rockabilly artist, in a sense. He did one or two rockabilly records. That was his only really big hit. He was also a disc jockey. And, of course, his main claim to fame was that he, he uh, died in the same air crash as Buddy Holly. But I thought the start with a sort of, you know, a dead fat disc jockey was quite a good idea. The world, or so it is said, has been eagerly anticipating biddly buddly boo. Let's start again. <laughs> World, or so it is said, has been an eagerly and oh, f you know, <laughs> we're not going to go. Should, look, shall I just go home? Yeah, no, no, don't go. I'm just sit down, get your feet up from it, leave it, leave it. <laughs> there you go. Best to leave it, let it dry, and brush it off in the morning. You'll only make it worse. You know, I can't understand it. He seemed all right around the boozer, laughing and talking, winking at the girls, buying drinks. Actually, I did think that was a bit funny, but I just put it down to the aging process. You know, like when your veins all start to go crackly. It looks as if I'll probably better stay on holiday for another night. So here's me, it's uh, Johnny Wolf. Tonight, my pretties, we go for the throats of the popular audience with sessions from three chart names. Yes, count them, three. There's Dex's Midnight Runners, The Vapors and Tubeway Army, a session recorded in January 1979. We have four more hicks from the sticks, and then amongst other records, MX-80 Sound, Mystere, Fives, The Pop Group, A General Accident, Quicksilver Messenger Service, Crispy Ambulance, The Ruts, Discharge, The Revillos, Teenage Jesus and the Jerks, The Slits and The Undertones, and to start us on the crimson path towards mass acceptability, the number ten... Oh, f sorry, I couldn't read me wrong right. Almost there, too. Almost there. Almost, but not quite. I'm sorry, folks, listening at home. As you could see, John Peel is almost there, whatever that means. I expect he'll be back on Monday. But obviously, it's John Walters here just to tell you that John Peel clearly does need a few more days' holiday. So why not sit around and listen to a real disc jockey, eh? Lionel Lark was an alchemist by profession, but he loved to quest. Lion Mole were a romantic pair, lie with his many-coloured zodiac coat flapping about as he rode the dawn wind. Rubbing his rimless spectacles, he lectured Mole in his larkish manner about the mythical lily pond and its latitude and longitude and goofing sometimes and mentioning the Hyperboreans, the frozen folk who lived behind the north wind. They were made very comfortable in beds of great expanse, spiderweb sheets and tires of warm woolly moss blankets. And... As always in an elfish abode, 
dreams of the gentlest texture. Oh, good Lord, I wonder what had happened there. Peel will never forgive me for playing that, you know. That's John Peel from 1969. Uh, it's reading a Mark Boland thing from that unicorn out.